Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing penicillin antibiotics. Okay, so we're currently in the process of discussing the different classes of penicillin antibiotics. So we've seen the two original penicillins, which are penicillin G and penicillin V, uh, and we've now seen a second class of penicillins, which are the beta-lactamase resistant penicillins, because we've discussed how um, when we uh, use the original penicillins against bacteria again and again and again, what has gradually occurred is that bacterial populations have evolved resistance to the penicillin antibiotics. And one of the uh, early mechanisms by which this actually occurred was that uh, the cells would overexpress beta-lactamase enzymes which would break down the penicillin antibiotic and therefore um, yield the antibiotic useless against the bacteria. So what we then developed were penicillin antibiotics which had an R group which meant that these beta-lactamase enzymes couldn't actually break them down. So fluploxacillin and methacillin are examples of beta-lactamase resistant penicillins but there are lots of other ones as well, those are just two notable examples. Another strategy to cope with um, overexpression of beta-lactamase enzymes and getting penicillin resistance in that way uh, was the development of the beta-lactamase inhibitors such as clavulonic acid and tazobactam. These are drugs that can be given in combination with uh, a penicillin antibiotic and their job will be to inhibit the beta-lactamase enzyme whilst the penicillin is then free to go and inhibit the peptidoglycan transpeptidase without getting broken down by the beta-lactamase enzyme and therefore uh, we will still uh, be able to kill the bacterium even though it is over expressing the beta lactamase enzyme. Okay, however, of course, that is only one mechanism that a bacterial cell can use to get around uh, penicillin uh, toxicity. Okay, what is now starting to emerge is other mechanisms for resistance to penicillin. So, one of the mechanisms that has meant that bacterial cells have become completely resistant to all penicillin antibiotics is that you can have an altered form of the peptidoglycan transpeptidase enzyme. So if you alter that enzyme so that now penicillin antibiotics will no longer inhibit that enzyme, then of course all of the penicillin antibiotics become completely useless against such a bacterial cell. So again, what has happened is we've used penicillin antibiotics against a huge population of bacterial cells, and in that massive population, some of those cells have had this variation that means uh, that their peptidoglycan transpeptidase cannot be inhibited by the penicillin antibiotics. It just doesn't work. Uh, so now they will survive the penicillin antibiotic, the selection pressure, and will then repopulate the population of bacteria. So you'll overall get the evolution of the population towards uh, now having a much larger percentage of the bacterial cells with this modified peptidoglycan transpeptidase that is insensitive to penicillin antibiotics. And one of the major um, strains of bacterial species that has uh, indeed emerged with this property is MRSA. So MRSA is a strain of Staphylococcus aureus that indeed has this modified peptidoglycan transpeptidase which is resistant to all penicillin antibiotics. Okay, so MRSA stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, so uh, methicillin is an example of a beta-lactamase resistant penicillin. So the reason this is called methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is that methicillin is supposed to be one of the penicillin antibiotics that is resistant to resistance. Okay, so these Staphylococcus aureus bacteria are resistant even to the beta-lactamase resistant penicillin. That's why it's called methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. However, it's actually resistant to all penicillin antibiotics. So a better name would have probably been penicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, but to stress the fact that even the beta-lactamase resistant penicillins do not work against it, it's called methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, so MRSA is an example of 
a strain of a bacterial species, namely the bacterial species Staphylococcus aureus, which have got this modified form of peptidoglycan transpeptidase that means that now all of the penicillin antibiotics, even those that were supposed to be resistant to penicillin resistance, such as methicillin, are now useless against it. Okay, so this is obviously a big uh, worry because uh, penicillin antibiotics are a major class of antibiotics that are now completely useless against uh, this strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Okay, and it's becoming more and more prevalent, so uh, the um, percentage of the Staphylococcus aureus population that is this methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus strain is becoming larger and larger. The population is evolving towards that, so that's beginning to dominate over the old Staphylococcus aureus, which penicillin worked against. Okay, so that's uh, a new problem in uh, penicillin resistance. Now what I want to do is turn away from this story of resistance and back onto the story of trying to make the penicillin antibiotics better against gram-negative bacteria. So remember, when we were discussing the original penicillins, penicillin G and penicillin V, I said that they're very good against gram-positive bacteria, but they're much worse against gram-negative bacteria. So the final two classes of penicillin antibiotics are modified versions of the original penicillin antibiotics to try and make them better against gram-negative bacteria. Okay, right, so the next category is what's called broad-spectrum penicillins. And the reason it's called broad-spectrum is that it's going to work against a larger spectrum of bacterial species. So broad-spectrum penicillins. Okay, so these are going to be far better against gram-negative bacteria than the originals. However, these ones will be now susceptible again to beta-lactamase breakdown. So they don't have the fancy property uh, that the beta-lactamase resistant penicillins have, which means that they're resistant to the beta-lactamase enzymes. So these ones are often going to be given in combination with a beta-lactamase inhibitor to protect them. Okay, so broad-spectrum penicillins. So examples here are ampicillin and amoxicillin. So ampicillin and amoxicillin. So these are modified penicillin antibiotics uh, so that they will have a greater efficacy against gram-negative bacterial species. They're much better than the original penicillins at killing gram-negative bacterial species. Okay, now, as I say, these ones will not have the property of being resistant, however, to beta-lactamase uh, enzymes. So if uh, they are facing a bacterial cell that has beta-lactamase enzymes, they're going to just be broken down. So often these are given in combination with beta-lactamase inhibitors, and amoxicillin in particular is often given with clavulonic acid, and there are two names for this combination. The sort of generic name is coamoxiclav, which is well worth being aware of, so of course it's just uh, coamoxy, well, co for the fact that we're giving them in a combination, amoxy for amoxicillin, and clav for clavulonic acid. This is also often called augmentin. Augmentin was the original brand's name for this, whereas coamoxiclav is the generic name. Okay, so if you hear someone referring to coamoxiclav or augmentin, it just means the combination of amoxicillin with clavulonic acid. So amoxicillin is there to do the actual killing of the bacterial cell, clavulonic acid is there to inhibit any beta-lactamase enzymes uh, that would break down the amoxicillin. Okay, so that's the third class of penicillin antibiotics. Now onto the final class of penicillin antibiotics. These are even more uh, broader spectrum, so these are now called the extended spectrum penicillins. Okay, so these can kill an even larger spectrum of bacterial species. In particular, they can kill a bacterial species known as Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, now Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and I will write down its name in full in a moment, is a nasty species of bacterial. It's very, very difficult to actually kill with antibiotics. There are very few antibiotics that actually have efficacy against it. And even these broad-spectrum penicillins, they are not uh, good against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So the extended-spectrum penicillins have been modified further still so that now they have efficacy against this horrible species of bacterium. Okay, so this is called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. It's 
one of the ones that people with cystic fibrosis generally get respiratory tract infections with Pseudomonas aeruginosa and once they've got it it's really difficult to clear it, it usually stays with them for the rest of their lives because it is so difficult to clear okay uh, all you can really hope to do is control it so Pseudomonas aeruginosa Okay, uh, so it's a horrible bacterial species that very few antibiotics work against, and these extended spectrum penicillins are now modified so that they have as high as efficacy as possible against Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So the broad spectrum ones aren't very good against this, the originals certainly aren't very good against this, neither are the beta lactamase resistant penicillins. So these extended spectrum penicillins they are now e efficacious to some extent against Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is, by the way, a gram-negative bacterium. Okay, so uh, what examples of extended spectrum penicillins are there then? So examples are ticarcillin and piprocillin. So ticarcillin and piprocillin. And again, these two, they are their special property is that they can kill this uh, bacterial species that very few antibiotics can. Okay, they have a very good extended spectrum of bacterial species that they can actually uh, kill. They are not, however, beta lactamase resistant, so they don't have both of the properties of killing loads of different bacterial species and being beta lactamase resistant. So if the bacterial species does have a very high expression level of beta lactamases, they're just going to get broken down. So often these are also given in combination with a beta lactamase inhibitor. And piprocillin in particular is often given with tazobactam, and that combination of piprocillin with tazobactam is known as tazosin. So if you hear someone referring to tazazin, this means uh, piprocillin, this extended spectrum penicillin antibiotic, with the beta lactamase inhibitor to protect it, tazobactam. Okay, and um, that is a drug that you will see often used uh, to clear respiratory infections with Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Okay, so um, that's all I've now got to say on the penicillin antibiotics, so we'll end this video here.